Thank you for tuning in to Upon the Rock broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Lawrence Shakir. I believe the Word of God will build a godly foundation in the lives of people. There is more available information on our website. You can log on to ShakirMinistries.org. Now, let's go on to today's message. You are blessed, he says. And he said, you are inherit the kingdom before, uh, prepared for you before the foundation of the world. God has already prepared something for you from the beginning. And he says, you're blessed because you were loyal during this time. Okay? And so, um, he said, when you did this to the least of these, uh, you did it to me. And then the king will answer them. Um, and the king answered them, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, my brothers, uh, you did it to me. And so he says, I saw your loyalty in that time. I saw the evidence of you being loyal because you knew how to have the balance. You knew how that when it was time to do something, and even though you probably didn't feel like doing it, you knew it had to be done. You knew that you had the, the, the fruit in you to get it done, and you got up and you went and did it. Yes, it was a little bit tiring. Yes, it was a little bit exhausting. And yes, it took a lot of your energy away. But the, the bottom line is, you got up and you did it. And the Lord says, I have noticed that. And you are loyal and you are faithful. So look at this. And in St. John chapter 13, he kind of adds a little bit to uh, you know, the, the, the evidence or the fruit that you've done. And he was sitting around with his disciples talking about how, you know, we, we you know, this was like a little bit before he got crucified. He was telling them all of the things that they have done and, and, and how much he appreciated them and prayed over them and everything. And, and he was kind of just wrapping up his ministry, so to speak. And so he, he says, but, you know, before I leave, I want to give you one new commandment. I know you know about the Ten Commandments, but I want to give you one new commandment. And he says, a, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. So when you, when, when you hear Jesus say love one another, you can just say, oh, okay, that sounds pretty easy. No. Think about what he says. I want you to love one another. Love is not something that you say. Love is something that you do. Love is something that you are. And when he says one another, he was speaking to his disciples on, in this point because, number one, and I think it's very important to hear that because we as the body of Christ need to love one another. We need some help, sadly. We need some help when, when we have, you know, uh, the body of Christ in competition with each other, the body of Christ um, suing each other, the body of Christ fighting each other. You know, there are several other things we could be doing as the body of Christ instead of, you know, choking each other out. But sadly, that's what's going on. But he says the new commandment is I want you all to love one another. I want you to show that evidence and being loyal to one another. As I have loved you, I put up with you. With your foolishness, I was there with you for these three and a half years. I showed you who I was. I was, I was there for you. I, I loved you. I didn't just come out and tell you I love you, but I showed you love. I was loyal to you. I told the, the parables to the crowd, but to you, I explained the parables. I was loyal to you. I was committed to you. I healed the sick. I prayed for your families. I fed you. You picked up the 12 baskets. I was loyal to you. He says, one commandment is, I want you to be loyal. I want you to love one another, just like I loved you. The example that I showed you in these three years, Jesus speaking to his disciples, is what I want you to show each other for the rest of your life. I want you to be committed to each other. I want you to see the, the best in each other. Not the worst, but the best. Just like how I loved you and I seen the best in you when you was cleaning your nets, when you was a tax collector, when you was doing this. And even when he called Judas, he knew Judas was going to betray him, but he saw the best in him. I want you to be loving toward each other. Love one another, he said. Just like I loved you. And then he says that also, uh, that you also love one another. By this, here's the key. This is the result. This is the, the very reason why he told us to do this. By this, 
all, how much is all? Everybody, right? All will know that you are my disciples. You are my followers. You are the ones that have been trained and developed by me. You are my apprentice. That's what a disciple basically is. It's somebody who's trained to be just like their teacher or just like their mentor. You are my disciples. If, here's the key again, if you love, you have one, if you have love for one another, if you can love them like I loved you, everybody's going to know that you're a real one. You're not, you're not the fake kind. There's a lot of fake ones out there. What's going to separate you from being the real or the fake? He says, the way you love one another. The way you see the good out of somebody else. The way you can put up with uncomfortable people and still be loyal. When you can put up with uncomfortable situations and still be there, people are going to recognize that. They may not say anything, and you may feel like you're wasting your time. But he said, it will not go unnoticed. That's awesome to me. That God is saying, I am taking account of what's going on. You may not see me naked and hungry, but I have, I have records that you were there. When you were tired, you still went. You still got involved. You still prayed. You still was committed. I have records, he's saying. And so look at this. Back in Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. I hope you all are getting a, a lot out of this. Um, he says, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. This is how you be loyal. You can lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. Um, how do you do that? He said, when you do this, neither moth, moth nor dust or rust destroys, and uh, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's where your heart's going to be at. Whatever you think is most important, to you, whether it's something in the heavenly realm or something on this earth, he said, that's where your heart's going to be. What, what if, it's, if it's important to you, that's where your heart's going to be. And so if it doesn't mean anything to you in this, uh, in this way, it doesn't mean anything to God. But whatever means important to you, it's important to God. And God is trying to see where's your heart at. And there's so much I can say in that verse, but for the sake of time, I just want you to just have that revelation of knowing that whatever you place uh, important in your life, God sees it that it's important too because it's important to you. But are you going to be loyal to that? Are you going to have this kind of treasure and make sure whatever it is that it's something that you can, can, you can build it up and, and connect it to heaven? If it's something that's on the earth, then it's, gonna, it's not going to last anyway. The lamp of the eye, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. That's, that's, that's broad too. What, is, what does he mean by that? If your whole, if your existence, everything you do is, is good, or everything that you see that, that is a, a light, the Bible tells us, let me read it again. The lamp of the body is the eye. What you see is what gets inside of your soul. If you're, therefore, if your eye is good, if you see the good out of the situation, you're, and your whole body will be full of light. You're not a negative person. You're taking in all the good things. And then he says, if your eye is bad, you're pessimistic, or if you're negative, if you're somebody who's unfaithful, then your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light in you that is in in you is darkness, then how great is the darkness? So if you think what you're doing is good, but it's actually really dark, then how dark is the bad part of you that's really dark, okay? But, he says, to kill all that, if you can learn how to seek God first and his righteousness, the Bible says, everything will be added, all these things will be added onto you. If you go out and chase something else and think that's going to bring you satisfaction, you're going to be disappointed. But if you if you can focus your attention on seeking God and not worry about trying to catch everything else, the Bible says the more you seek God, those things will just start turning around, start chasing behind you. While you're chasing God, those things are chasing you. So you don't have, because some things are too spread out for you to get everything. You don't have enough time to get that. But if you can focus on God, everything, no matter where they're at, north, east, south, west, they'll come together and they'll come to you. If you learn how to seek God, 
and his righteousness with all your heart. The Bible says all of these things will be added unto you. You may be lucky to get one or two of those things going out and chase it yourself. But the, the perfect plan of God for your life, let's just say if God wants to give you 10 major things. I'm just using 10 for a number. But if he wants to give you 10 major things for your lifetime and you only, out of your lifetime, only got two of them because you went running after those two. Well, you could have had the other eight if you probably would have just really seek God. The rest of them would have started to come to you. It may take a little while, but it will still come to you. It's more than what you can do on your own. Okay? I hope you all are getting something out of this. Please let me know. You get to write me or let me know that this is a blessing to you. Look at this. In Psalm chapter 112, as you, as you all realize, I, I read a lot of scriptures because I have really nothing to say except for what the Bible says. And th these words are applied to our own lives, so help us to live a better life. He said, a good man deals generously and, and lends. A good man. Or in other words, I'm going to just kind of substitute that word good for loyal. A loyal man deals generously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will not be shaken. This loyal guy. Surely he will not be shaken. The righteous, another way of saying loyal or faithful, the righteous will be an everlasting remembrance. The person that knows how to be loyal, the person that knows how to put up with things, the person who knows how to um, stay focused on what was called for them to do, the Bible says they will be remembered everlasting. They have an everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid, afraid of evil tidings or evil times or evil circumstances or evil schemes. He will not be afraid. Why? His heart is steadfast. Why? He's trusting in the Lord. God says that the reason why he can go through this and still make it out is because he knows where his help really comes from. His help doesn't come from anything that he's done. His help doesn't come from anything that he has uh, put stock in or his careers. His, he's trusting in the Lord. And since he's trusting in the Lord, he can go through these what Paul calls light afflictions. And sometimes that's what you got to kind of remind yourself on when you have these evil tidings that come in that, you know what? I have been faithful, not to toot yourself and not to, uh, you know, puff yourself up, but you need to remind yourself, I have been faithful. And according to the scripture, God says he, he will, I have been, I mean, I've been young and I've been old. I've never seen a righteous forsaken. The Lord will not forsake me. So when these evil titans come, I don't need to freak out about it. All I need to do is just keep on trusting God, just like when I was trusting God when I was doing the other things. So when it comes to being loyal to that business or to that calling or to that marriage or to that family or to that career or to that school, make sure that you have the right perspective when it comes to this because you will, you, you're going to be tested, yes, but God is keeping a record of all of the stuff that you're doing. Not so you can get a gold star by your name each day. But just make sure your heart is right and make sure that you are seeking God in all of these things because God is trying to add things to you. But if you don't pass the test of loyalty and being faithful, then those things have no way to no way to get to you because you have not drawn out the path for them to come to you because you hadn't been seeking God the way you need to. My recommendation is just to pray, God, what do you want me to do and help me? to be loyal to that, help me to be faithful to that so that so that I can end up in the, the perfect will of God for my life. Because like I said earlier, you can you can be in a, a good will of your life, but it's not the perfect will of God for your particular life. You may get lucky and get get two things from your perfect will, but God wants to give you all ten. And that comes when you can just focus on what God is telling you to focus on and be loyal to that. And then that's when he starts to bring things together. Things that you didn't even try to put together, it will start coming to you because you have stood the test. You have been faithful. You have been loyal to what God has called you to do. And even though the days in and days out and days in and days out, you have been tired and you have been uh, you know, exhausted, but you have still remained committed to what God has called you to do. And your reward is coming. And I believe that, that because you have been loyal, because you have had a good attitude, because you have seen the bright side of everything that God is trying to you know, put in your life, he's going to add things to you. And I'm not trying to say this as, 
a quote unquote prosperity message, but I'm saying that there are certain principles and certain things that God has already said in his word that he will not negotiate on. And so when he talks about that, these things you will, you will harvest and, and, and you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life and all of these other good promises. There are certain promises that you're supposed to get on earth, on the land of the living before you get to heaven. He, David said like this, I would have fainted if I had not seen the goodness of the, of the Lord in the land of the living. So you are in the land of the living right now and God has something that he's trying to get to you and he's going to get it to you but the path is how loyal can you be during these times of nothingness. And I believe that God is already setting you up right now and bringing those things to you. So thank you for tuning into this broadcast. Please write me and let me know if this has been a blessing to you. Remember, let's be loyal to whatever God has placed in our hearts and let's just reach this, this destination together. Okay? Take care. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Upon the Rock broadcast. If this message has been a blessing, you can help us spread the gospel by sharing this message with your friends. Also, if you're online, please be sure to contact me either through our website at ShakirMinistries.org or through social media. I would love to hear from you. Together, we can build a godly foundation in the lives of people. Until next time, please know that I'm praying for you, and I hope to see you on our next broadcast.